our Bibles to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 6. I'm going to start reading from verse 16. Verses 16 through 20. Next two weeks, uh, we are going to look at the authority of prayer and uh, the power of prayer. So, um, let's look at the verses today. Um, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 16 through 20. If you have the ESV Bible, let's read all together. For people swear by something greater than themselves, and in all their disputes, and all oath is final for confirmation. So when God desired to show more convincingly to the heirs of the promise, the unchangeable character of his purpose, he guaranteed it with an oath. So that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled for refuge might have strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope set before us. We have this as a sure and established anchor of our soul, a hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain, where Jesus has gone as a forerunner on our behalf, having become a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Amen. Today I'd like to share a message titled, The Authority of Believers. But, um, you know, we have authority to pray. One of the things that you have to understand is that God has given the authority and power to church. So church has authority. Church has a power. And that power is the authority of prayer and authority, the power to pray. Because through prayer, everything is possible with God. So that's why you know, church is called the house of prayer. Why? Because through prayer, that church exercises the authority. Church exercises the power. So that is why the church has to be the church of prayer. That's why it's very, very important. When you look at the whole Bible, one of the things that I notice is that, you know what? God has given that authority and power to the church. I want you guys to open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. And I'm just to read the verse from 18, 18. And then we're going to continue on to 20, 18 to 20. Let us read all together. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I'll build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly charged the disciple to tell no one that he was the Christ. One of the things that I realized is that he says to Peter that I'm going to build my church. And he says, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. What is the keys? Keys is whatever you are going to open. So in heaven, you see what I'm saying? Whatever you want to establish something on this earth, then you have to have a key. And through that key, you open the things of heaven, and then you bring it down on this earth. One of the things that you have to understand, the power of the prayer is what that is. You see what I'm saying? That's why you said, if you bind on earth, you, then what you bind in heaven? You, you, you lose on earth, then what you lose in heaven? Why? Because through prayer, what we do is that we bind and we lose. One of the things that you have to understand is that heavenly thing is already established. You see what I'm saying? But Bible says that you know, we have to lose first, that we have to bind first. Then what we have to do is that we need to pray. You see what I'm saying? We need to ask God, bind it and lose it. And what happens is that heaven will be open and the heavenly things will come down on this earth. Amen. That's how the heaven begins to invade. One of the things that you have to understand is that God has given that authority to church. If you look at Jacob, that when he met God in Bethel, what happened is that he named that place Bethel. And the place that called Bethel means it's a house of God. What he saw was that there was a ladder between you know, the ground and the heaven. And what happened was that the angels was coming forth, coming up and down and up and down. You see what I'm saying? And that's the vision that he saw. And after he saw that vision, what happened is that this is the place of God. This is the house of God. And he named that place Bethel. Why? Because the house of God means that there's a ladder is that connected to heaven and earth. Amen? And whatever we pray on this earth, what happens is the angel will take that prayer and then, you know, with the golden censer, he goes up. You see what I'm saying? And, you know, lay it before God. And what, hap what happens is that heavenly things will become a reality on this earth. So that's what God desires. That's the authority and power that God has given to us. 
I want to challenge you guys that you know what? we need to become a people of prayer. We need to become a church of prayer. Amen? So that what happens is that the heaven is open in this place. And what happens is that whatever we ask that God has given to us. You see what I'm saying? You know, because He blesses our life, He empowers our life, and He fills us with His strength and His power. And that's what we need, you know. So that is why church is a church of prayer. You see what I'm saying? Where the main occupation, main thing that we need to do is to pray. You see what I'm saying? And when we pray, what happens is that God opens the heaven's door. And then you know what? God pours out, you know, uh, in, in our life. And that is the thing. God has given us that authority. And God has given us that power. But you know what? We have to use that authority. We have to use that power to bring the kingdom down in us. You know? One of the things that we have to establish in ourselves is this. As a Christian, as a church, you know, what we need to really have a vision for is this. Un until that this earth becomes a kingdom of God. Until the kingdom of God is established in all areas of this world, we have to pray. Amen. And we have to pursue. That's why I truly believe that the end time revival truly comes through prayer. You see what I'm saying? Because every revival in the past, I study it. It's what? It's a prayer. You see what I'm saying? True revival always comes through prayer. And you have to understand. So that is what we do. Is I, I want to talk about prayer. You see what I'm saying? How God has given us the authority to pray. And how we can pray in faith so that we can receive anything that we ask before God. Because a lot of times, people say, oh, you know, I pray for a certain thing for a long time. I pray for this for a long time. And I say to them, you know what? You know, and then you they never receive the answer. And that's the experience that people tell me, you know, a lot of times. And I'll, I'll say this, you see what I'm saying? If you did not receive it, then you know what? You did not pray in faith. You see what I'm saying? Because the Bible says whatever you ask, and if you believe that you have it, then you will have it. Amen? That's what the Bible says. And I truly believe the Word of God is more true than what people's experience or what people say. You see what I'm saying? I think we need to start praying in faith. What does that mean to really pray? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And the first thing that I want to say is this. If you want to pray with authority, then you know what? You have to pray in the Word. And that's what we need to see today. You know? You have to grasp the Word of God. Because if you don't grasp the Word of God, then you know what? True revival or true answer to prayer will not come. Why? Because you are not true, you know, praying in the Word. You know? One thing that I realize is that there's only one reason that prayer will not answer or who's doing it. God answered every prayer in the Bible. Did you know that? From Genesis to Revelation, He answered every prayer. But you know what? One prayer in the Bible says that through this you cannot receive. You know? And that is in the book of James, chapter 4. It says that if you ask in your fleshly desires, to fulfill your fleshly desires, then you will not have an That's only one. You know, we have a 66 books in this Bible, and that's the only one reason that God will not answer your prayer. You know what that means? That He's going to answer every prayer. Amen. All others, He's going to answer. That's what He's saying. You know? But you know what? You have to hold on to the promise of God. You know, one of the great, my favorite revivals in the past was Charles Finney. And one of the things is that he was a lawyer, you know? And as a lawyer, what he did was he studied. After he became a Christian, after he was baptized with the Holy Spirit, what he saw the Bible as is that you know, this is the law. That's what he said. He saw the principles that's there. And you know what? He was able to bring such a revival is that he was holding on to the word of God and God's law will not change, no matter what. Because he understood the law. And if we pray, you know, according to this law, God will answer every prayer. He believed that. That's why he and Father Nash are men of prayer. They both, after the revival meeting, they always come to the Lord's And begin to pray to God. Lord, you promised. You know, revival should happen. Amen. He was just challenging God. You know, show yourself that your word is faithful. You see what I'm saying? That you cannot lie. That every word is true. You know, every night he was just crying and praying together with Father Nash. Father Nash was a man of prayer. Before he, he you know, Charles Finney goes to the city, what he does is that he sends Father Nash to that city a week, week, week before, you know. 
And he gets into an end. And what he does is that all day, all night he prays. He breaks down the walls and stumbling blocks of that city. You know, for the, for the recession of the gospel. So what he does is that he breaks down those walls. He removes all the stumbling blocks. Amen? And then when Charles Finney just goes there and then preaches the gospel, what happens is that all people except Jesus Christ, the person say, Amen. A true revival comes. You know, if you look at Charles Finney's sermon, one of the things is that it was very logical. And one of the things is that he used a lot of conviction of the Holy Spirit. It's one of the people truly you know? So I was like, he offended a lot of people too. But you know what? There was a revival. But it was an everlasting revival. Why? Because it was a true repentance. Because it is through the conviction of the Holy Spirit, not through emotion. You see what I'm saying? When revival comes through emotion, what happens is that it doesn't last. But what happens is that when there's a true conviction of the Holy Spirit, then you know what? It begins to pierce your heart. And you truly begin to cry out what you want. And truly repent. And then they, you know, turn their life around. And they come to God. That's a true revival, amen? You know? But that's what happened. Why? Because it happened through prayer. The Holy Spirit moved in such a way that it begins to convict, it begins to change people's life. You know? And what happens is that people are just coming all over the place. This what I'm I truly believe that that kind of revival will happen in the end time revival, amen? Right but what we need is we need to prepare ourselves and pray, amen? Right you have to understand that. But in order to pray, prayer, prayer, I want to say I'm doing this. I want to say this. You have to pray for sure things. You shouldn't have any doubt. Amen? One of the things that I see here in the book of Hebrew, let's go up. In the book of Hebrew, let's look at verse 16. It says, For people swear by something greater than themselves, and in all their disputes, an oath is final for confirmation. What is that? It means this, okay? There's people always have dispute, right? I, I, I'm a pastor, okay? When I go to church, everybody has a different thought, everybody has a different opinion, everybody has a different thing. You see what I'm saying? So there's always a dispute, you know? When you go to, when you bring some people, a group of people into the same room, they're going to have certain dispute, right? Because their personality is different, background is different, their thoughts are different. You see what I'm saying? You know? There's always going to be a dispute. There's always going to be a fight. There's always going to be an argument. Today, I, I, I gave a sermon, uh, you know, today morning, 10.30, you know, in KM. I was just preaching the Word of God. Some people, I know, they got offended. You see what I'm saying? When I was preaching the Word of God, they do not agree with the Word that I was saying to them. You see what I'm saying? Why? Because their thought is different. Their perspective is different. Whatever is significant and important is different from them. That's why there's always a dispute. But how do you resolve a dispute and make it work? The Bible says, oh, is the confirmation. What that means is that, you know, the word of God will settle it. You know, word of God should settle it. Especially inside the church. Amen? You know? Because church is the place, the pillar of truth and foundation of truth. Amen? That's what the Bible says. So whatever the opinion is, the word of God should settle everything in our life. Amen? If there is a dispute between a friend, the word of God should settle everything. Amen? Why? Because the Bible said, you know, call every man a liar, but you know, only God is the the truth. Amen? God is the one who is faithful, and God is the one who always speaks the truth. All the disputes should be gone. Amen? One of the things that I want to challenge you is this. When you are praying, if there's too many thoughts inside your heart, you're not praying in faith. If there's too many opinions inside your mind, you're not praying in faith. We hear a lot of stuff. You know, we look at the circumstances and say, oh, I don't think it's going to happen. Or we, if we hear some people's opinion, we say, oh, yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. When I sometimes pray, you know, proclaim about faith, some people call me crazy. It doesn't matter. Because I know that every man is a liar, but God is the truth. Amen? That he will never lie. Amen? So in order to pray in prayer of faith, you've got to pray for certain things. You see what I'm saying? If you have a doubt inside your heart, then don't expect God to answer your prayer. If you have the people's opinion inside your mind, or your own opinion inside your mind, 
then you have to bother to pray. Why? Because God's gonna have to answer your prayer. But God is going to answer a prayer if you hold on to the word of God. Because every dispute is settled. Amen? Inside your heart, inside your mind. Because the word of God says so, and I know that is true. And if you hold on to the word of God and pray, God will answer your prayer. Amen. Why? Because God can help. I want to say this. In the Old Testament, whatever the prophet of God said, it happened. Amen. Sometimes it took time, but it happened. You know? If it's true word of God, it always happened. Read, read it. Read the Old Testament. You know? If you read the Old Testament, every prophet, Elijah says, okay, there's not going to be any rain until I say so. And three and a half years later, we'll be in the And Elijah said, okay, it's time for rain. He went up to the mountain and began to pray 40 days fasting. You know? And asking God for a sign. And when he saw the small cloud, you know, the size of him, you know, he said, rain's going to come. And then you know what? The rain is just pouring out after three and a half years. Why? Every prophet of God, when they say the word of God, what it means. You know? But how about New Testament? Do we have truly have a problem? No. We have the word of God. Old Testament and New Testament. Amen? This is what I mean. Okay? And this is what the Bible says. Okay? If you hold on to and truly believe the word of God and obey them and believe them that is the word of God. Amen? It will become a reality. That's how it works. That's what God says in Hebrews chapter 4. It says that, you know, the word of God then does not benefit people. Why? Because they do not accept the word of God. Through. They don't combine the word of God. Through. That's why it does not do. The word of God, if you accept it in faith, and you truly believe that this is God's word, that He cannot lie. This thing, you know, I study all the men who brought the Bible. As I was turning, the one thing that I would go is stir my heart was this. These people did not really care about people's opinion or culture. They only care about what the word of God says. And they tested that to be not in their But the word of God is true. And they start experiencing the miracles. And the hearts. And the resurrection. Amen. If the word of God is true, if it's true, then. It's true now. And you will not change. They hold on to God's word no matter what. That that is the truth more than my circumstances and my own thoughts. Enough. What popular people are saying, you know? It's more than that. The word of God is true. Are you going to prove the word of God is true in your life? Enough. That's what God decided. That's what it means to have faith. Amen? You know? It doesn't matter the circumstance. It doesn't matter what people say. Amen? Only thing that matters is that are you really listening to God and what He's saying? And are you believing that it is the 100% true? Whatever God says, that He can help. A lot of people, through their experience, they say, oh, I tried this, I tried that. It didn't work, you know? I can't believe it. People will say that, and some Christians will say that. You know why? That means that you do not truly believe. You do not truly believe that the word of God, that this is the word of God. You know? And one of the challenges I'm going to put to you is this. If you believe this word of God, it will happen according to this word. You know? You know? But the thing is, it's faith. I want to say this, okay? Faith without deeds, anything. Okay? What that means is this. Do you truly believe that this is not That this is not a man's way? This is God. If you truly believe that, you don't have some words. Seriously. You read this book more than other words. Amen? If you truly believe. Amen? But 
that means the future will be based on actions that you do. A lot of people I see today are not strong persons. Really? But there is a thing. You don't have that thing. So I'm saying, a lot of people say, oh, I'm saved by faith. Sometimes they don't know what that faith means. According to the biblical definition. Yeah. One of the challenges that I want to give to you is this. If you truly believe it, you hold on to it. And you can prove it. And that's what is true. Amen. Yeah. Then you can be sure that God will serve you. Amen. Yeah. There is no truth of my feelings inside my head. Behind this world. Everything is settled in my heart and my mind that this is God's word. It must be true. And I'm praying for it. And I'm going to You know? That's the authority of God's word. If you don't have the word, you cannot be heard of the word. You've got to have the word. I'm talking about this is the genius. Verse 5, chapter 1, verse 5. <laughs> 5 through 8. If you have a yes, well, let's read all together. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For the one who doubt is like the rain of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person not supposed that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double minded man, unstable in all his way. Faithless mind is double mindedness. When you have a double mind, or it happens in your life, you know, I believe I have that. You know, I trust I have been. That's double mindedness. You know? Inside your mind, there's a two opinions. Inside your mind, that thing is settled. Then you won't have anything to do. You see what I'm saying? You have only one mindset. That God's going to answer your prayer. You know? You have only one mindset. That when you pray, that God's going to answer you. Why? Because you are praying according to His will. According to His will. You know? And it will happen. Do you see it? That's a prayer. You know? If you begin to like pursue different things all over, you see what I'm saying? You cannot really pray. Sorry. Sometimes when I train people to pray, I, I, I let them pray for one thing. You know why? Because that's the only way that they can really pray. You see what I'm saying? If you pray for so many different things, then you know you cannot really know. You see what I'm saying? God is answering you. Or you cannot really have faith. You see what I'm saying? You gotta have one mindset. And one mindset is that you know, that's the answer. Sometimes, you know, I you know, prophesy with people and say, you know, like, this thing's going to happen. And they say, I hope so. <laughs> You're being double-minded. <laughs> You're not really trusting that word. You know what faith is? Open to the word. Faith is this. Trusting in God's word. And that God's word is faithful and will happen. Amen. That's what Abraham believed, right? And I'm going to make you a great nation. Right? Yeah. You're going to be a father, you know, the father of faith. You're going to have a lot of, like, descendants who has faith after you. Right? Even though he didn't have a son in the circumstances, he waited for a while, it did not happen, right? That's the definition of faith. You know? And trusting is God's word is this. It's, it's like this. When I say something to you, 
you can say, okay, I believe that. But I don't believe that. You what I'm Some people get offended through the word of God sometimes. You know why? Because they say, I don't believe that. Okay, if I'm speaking the word of God, and if you don't believe that, you're rejecting God's word. Right? It's one or the other. If God says something to you, you say, I can do you know that. Then I guarantee you, you will have it. You know? But if you say, oh, I'm going to do that. Then you That word will never be accomplished. You see what I'm saying? You know? A lot of people prophesy with me. When I receive good prophecy, you know what I do? I say, Amen. And I know. It's mine. You know? It's going to happen. You know? There's so many promises in the book of God. If you can hold on to it and believe it with all of your heart, I guarantee you it will happen. You know? That's what God desires. You know? Why? Because our faith is founded in the world. Not anything else. And I know that was true. Some people say this to me. Well, I'll, I'll try to do that. There's no trying in you, you know? For example, if I say to you, okay, you know, this is the word of God for you, okay? And you said, I either believe, I either not believe, right? You cannot say, I try to believe. You will not say that. Which means there is no trying. There is no trying. Amen? You need to believe it. It's the same thing with the word of God, too. You believe whether this is the word of God, or you don't. You see what I'm saying? You know? What I'm preaching to you today, you believe that what I'm saying is true, but it's not true. It's up to the people. But I want to say this, the authority that God has given to us is the authority of faith. Believe in the word of God. And when you pray according to the word of God, it will happen. It's God can happen. You know? Is that my proof for you? According to the word. That God cannot happen. I never say any people, oh, I was deceived by God. You know, if you're a true Christian, you'll never be deceived by God. You'll be deceived by the devil, yes. But you'll never be deceived by God. You see what I'm saying? You know? If you truly believe that His word is true, you need to pray. You know what? I'm confident that any time God will happen to our church. Amen? You know? Amen? You know why? Because I have a confidence. And then later on, it says here, um, go back to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 17. He says, So when God decided to show worth listening to the heirs of the promise, the unchangeable character of his purpose, he guaranteed it. Did you know that every word of God is guaranteed by God? Amen? One thing that I realize is this, okay? One thing that I realize is this. When you buy stuff on the okay, when you buy Everything that you buy on this world. Nothing's really getting it. <laughs> right? You know? Nothing's really getting it. They say they guarantee this and they get They don't read people in America. They don't listen in America. They don't usually say that. Because they don't want to go into a lawsuit. You see what I'm saying? You know? They guarantee something and then you know what? If it doesn't work. You see what I'm saying? So there is no guarantee. Nothing is guaranteed. Anymore. Look at your future. Is anything guaranteed? Right? That's why you feel insecure sometimes. You know? That's why we wander sometimes. Why? Because nothing's really guaranteed. Right? That's why it's so hard to have peace inside of your heart. Because nothing's really guaranteed. Right? You, know? you don't know what's going to happen. Whether you graduate from college and whether you, you're not sure that you're going to get a job, you know. You see what I'm saying? Nothing is guaranteed. In your own thinking too, nothing is guaranteed, right? 
when you look at the future, right? I think we're guaranteed. Yeah. Are you more Protestant? No? I, I guarantee you. Wow. Yeah. I guarantee my word that this word will work for you. Amen? That's what he's saying. To those who believe, this word of God will work for you. That's what he's saying. You know, I had such a peace in my heart, you know? Like, this God guarantees that. Amen? And I know that it's going to happen. Amen? That, that's when you have peace. You know? And you truly believe. Because God said, I can't do it. You know? And this word is true. I want to say this. Family might come. The economy collapse might come. I want to say this. Those people who hold on to the word of God, those are not. Amen? And God's going to make them prosperous. Amen? You know? Despite all that things happen around us. Amen? Because God gave Jesus. That's not the thing. We need to believe God's word is true. One day God's going to shake all the things on this earth. You know why God shakes things on this earth? Because for this reason. Whatever is unshakable will remain. Whatever is shakable will collapse as well. And through whatever is remaining that is unshakable, because they're grounded in the world. You know? They're the one who's going to do God's work in this last day. To be like that. You know? Those people who have faith. You know? Those people who know that God's work is true. Let's continue to read Hebrews chapter 5, verse 18. It says this. So that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled for refuge might have strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope set before us. Do you know that the hope and faith always goes together and the word of God is always the hope? And faith is it's a substance of things hope. Hallelujah. You see what I'm saying? There's a difference between hope and faith. Hope is the word of God. But faith accomplishes the more. Faith makes a reality of whatever the hope that we have. Amen? Hope is always the word. Faith makes a reality. Amen? That's what it is. Let's continue to Verse 19. We have this as a sure and status anchor of the soul. A hope that entered into the inner place behind the curtain. It's the anchor of our soul. You know what anchor does? You know what anchor does, right? You know, when the sheep goes out to the, you know, the, the, the sea, open sea, and the storm comes, and what that sheep does is that, you know, they put on the So when this thing is tossed, it will circle around in one place because their anchor is holding onto the, the, the bottom of the rocks that is under the sea. You see what I'm saying? And then you know what? This ship is spinning around, but you know what? It's always staying the same place. You know? That's what anchor does. There is a uh, life is tough. You know? There's a storms in life. But when you have the word of God, you have the anchor of yourself. Steadfast and sure, unmovable, unshakable, amen. You will stand all the storms. That's what I'm saying. You know, the word of God does not change, amen. That's what God desires that we will become unshakable, amen. 
no matter what the storm comes in our life, we can always overcome. Amen? Because this is a sure thing. This is a steadfast thing. And when you begin to tremble, God says, do not be afraid. Because I am with you. Amen? That wonderful promise. This day I'm meeting a, a missionary who went to China. You know, the hard work of Jonathan Cooper from Canada. Wow. There were a lot of like, uh, you know, uprising, you know, persecution that came up. The Chinese people didn't like the foreigners. So they had like a boxer club or something. And this boxer club always persecuted all the foreigners who were teaching other culture and other you know, religion. You know, Jonathan Wolfer, you know, like he's a man of God. He always had his promise, but always in front of him. And he will always be, he will always grasp him. And what happens is that according to that word, you know, that, that God keeps them safe, you know, you know, all the time. You stay at home in his classroom. No matter what the storm throws at you, it does not matter. You know? Why? Because you have that word of God will keep you. That word of God will protect you. Amen. That word of God will help you stand tall and with might. And there's a storm. That, that, that word of God is like a solid rock. Even if there's a big storm, that storm is there. That rock you cannot move. Amen. Pray that we all stand on that. You know? The anchor of your soul. And that you will be God as well. The second thing that happens is this. If you are praying with God's word, trusting that His word is faithful, that His word is true, okay? And you pray, you give yourself. God still did not answer you. I experienced that. Okay. Then you want to come on you. Know, really, seriously. You know, that's what I did. One time I was praying for this. One thing. And I was holding on to the promise And then I prayed for whom? Sometimes I prayed for whom? For them. Believe me, I was like, sometimes like, Lord, walk me out in the middle of the night to pray. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? You let me. And I was just praying for about probably five weeks. And then it didn't happen. I was so sad. I said, God, how could you? <laughs> but you know, I said this. I could argue with God, you know what? Because I prayed for you. You know? I didn't pray for anything. I didn't pray for my person. And this is for other, other person. But this was not for me. And I said, Lord, I, I, I put the Bible in front of you, you know, and I said that, Lord, you promised. What happened? You know what? He gave you an answer. Why he did not answer? You? Wow. When I received his explanation, I was satisfied. You know? And I had more faith than before. Amen. A lot of times, a lot of people say, oh, if God did not answer my prayer, how can you have more faith? But it was different. You know why? Because God directly answered me on my argument. And then you know, he was planning something better. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You know? And I said to myself, wow. One thing that you have to understand is this. When you have the word of God, you can really not complain. You know? That's the only why, you know, it's not that. You can have, you can really talk to God. Honestly, amen? Why? Because He promised and He said He's going to fulfill that promise. Amen? You prayed about that promise, you hold on to that promise, and then you cling to that promise, and then you come to God, and God does, did not answer you. Then what happened is that you cannot argue. And then you, you need to receive his explanation. Amen. If he doesn't answer your prayer, he's preparing something better. Amen. 
Amen? I want you to really know that. You know? That's the only reason why he does not answer your prayer. When you're holding on to God's word. Amen? That's the only reason that I can find. You know? You see what I'm saying? So that's when I found out. I said, God, you are a God. I was being so you know, grateful and thankful. You see what I'm saying? Why? Because we're not arguing with God, He answered me. You know? Why He did not answer me? You know? One of the things that you have to understand is this. When you pray with the word of God, this is not a lie. You know? He said He guarantees His word. According to the word of God, you know? Yeah. He's going to give you a certain answer in that. You know? Believe me, when you truly pray in faith. You know? And you have to receive that answer in that. You know? It's true. That's why I say this God answers all the way. When you hold on to His word. In that? I guarantee you. When you hold on to His word and pray, I'll answer all of you. you know? And if He doesn't feel to give another one, why He does, He's not answering your prayer. Amen. Well, he, he, in a way, He answered your prayer. Amen. You know? It's true. You, know? you can't help it. When Abraham prayed for his nephew, Lot, when he was living in Sodom, God was showing him the gospel and destroy Solomon. So this Abraham started praying to God. But his argument while he was praying and talking to God was this. You are God of justice. How can you kill both righteous and unrighteous? You know? You're God of justice. You cannot do that. You know? So he started saying, what if there's a 50 righteous person inside the Solomon Memorial? Which is destroy that city? How about five less? Four five? So, how about thirty? I will not destroy for the thirty righteous person. How about twenty? I will destroy that city for twenty. How about ten? I will destroy it for ten. Amen. Can you see the argument of Abraham? He knew who God was. Amen. That God who rules this earth should be righteous. Amen. So you cannot kill the righteous and the wicked person at the same time. You know? So that was his argument. When you know the word of God, what happens is that you have an argument toward God. You know? That what he should do and what he should not do. You know? You know because that's what he wants. The Bible says, you know, like a lot of people say, oh, you know, God does all things. No. There are certain things that he cannot do. Right? Because he is God. And it's written in the Word of God. One thing, you cannot lie. You know? Isn't that true? You cannot lie. You know? You have to understand that. You know? There are certain things, he, sometimes he is restricted with his own word. You know? He has to keep his word. You know? If he's, if he's, not, if he's not a liar. Isn't that true? He is restricted what he said. You have to understand that. Then you know, you can make arguments. You know, with God. You can talk to God. You know, put it in his word. Amen. I truly believe that's what faith is all about. Amen. You believe in God's word in such a way that, you know what, when it does not happen, you have no argument. You can argue with God. The Bible also says this in the book of Job, it says that any honest person can come to God. Jesus. If you're upright and righteous, amen? If you hold on to the word and live by that word, amen? You always have to have with God. Amen? Hallelujah. So I'm saying, if Abraham prayed for, how about there's a one person? One righteous person inside, which is destroyed. 
if you want one more, you know, then you must only know more than still. You know, I truly remember that Abraham just prayed for 10 righteous persons. There's not 10 righteous persons in Sodom and Gomorrah. You see what I'm saying? So he just saved a lot because of Abraham. Authority and power that comes from this world. You know? It's that word back in your body. That everything that we pray for, God will answer. That's just what's happening to me. I want to hear an amen. That's all you can do. I want to hear amen one more time. Amen? You guys don't believe this? You know? You guys should believe this. Because it is the word of God. Amen? Not true? You know? And that you cannot know. You know? As long as you have true faith, you know. Lord Jesus, I thank you for giving me praise. I thank you so much for the message that you have given to us. Lord, give us faith. Give us faith to trust in you. 